friends, I want to paint some adorable little sheep with the black faces on some small four by four inch canvases. And I thought you guys might enjoy it too. So I set up a traceable. So if you don't feel confident drawing it on the canvas or just drawing in general, you can paint it too. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm gonna paint four of them at a time. I've got four little canvases ready to go. They're four inch by four inch. They're an inch and a half thick. I've sprayed them with water and they're still a little damp, but I've dried them with a hair dryer to shrink them up like a cotton t-shirt in a dryer. And then I'm gonna write the word love on all the canvases it's a great way to start. I think in the, my last couple of videos, I forgot because I was so excited to video uh, the paintings I was going to do. I forgot to write the word love. <laughs> and then I sketched out a sheep with a couple of little bumbly bees. Uh, it's to scale. It's four inches by four inches. I'm going to cut it out. And this traceable is on my uh, website. You can download it for a dollar. If you need to, uh, because of the pandemic and a lot of people are having hard economic times, you can download it for free. What else do I need to tell you? Oh, this is a watercolor pencil that I used from Michaels. So, and it'll just uh, dissolve right into the paint. So I think I'm gonna get my canvases set up. Oh, I know what else I wanna tell you. I think I wanna paint the canvas black, and then I'm gonna paint, um, I think, the ground that the sheep's standing on in some sort of yellow. And then I'm gonna have a pink background, a blue background, maybe a light green background, or maybe I'll switch it and have it a light yellow and have this green and then a purple background. Okay, I'm gonna get set up. I put out some titanium white and some Mars black. I use any black you have um, if your white isn't called titanium white, use whatever white you have. I just tell you because I watch other YouTube videos and it seems like people like to know. <laughs> I'm still learning. And then I'm going to use a Filbert brush. It's a number 12, but I don't think the sizing means much because I've noticed the sizes change uh, depending on the brand. And I think I got these on Amazon. Um, use any brush you have. You know, just use the supplies you have. Don't let... It is because you don't have the right brush or just the right color or whatever. Don't let that stop you from having some fun. And then I'm just going to paint black because I, it, oh, my phone's ringing. I'll be right back. Okay, I don't know what I was saying other than use the supplies you have already. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy more. So by painting this black, it's going to be harder to cover it with the light colors I was talking about, but I want... I think I want a, a little bit of that black to come through. Um, you'll see what I mean as we go along and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint my usual fun sort of just painterly background and I don't think we need to worry too much about it um, because not much of it's gonna show. And then I put a little white out. I'm gonna stick that down. Um, I put a little white out just so it's not solid black, but I don't know if that you even need to do that. Oh, and then I, um, this occurred to me the other day as I'm painting this. So normally I would set my paint ups on the right side instead of the left because I'm right handed. Um, but because of the way my uh, studio is set up and so I can set up a video arm to hold my my cell phone as a camera, I have it a bit backwards, so it makes it a little bit awkward. Normally, um, you would paint, have the paints on the side of your dominant hand that you paint with, if that makes sense. So this is one of those cases where do what I say, not what I do. I have it just set up backwards for videoing. So hopefully that makes a little sense. All right, I'm gonna paint all my canvases black and I'll be back in a little bit. I wanted to show you something. Can you see, oops, sorry, that's off camera. Can you see the little white, 
might not be able to. Oh, there you kind of can. The little white bits where the canvas, where when I dried it with a hair dryer, I think the acrylic paint shrinks a little bit. And then it shows part of the canvas. I don't know. If you weren't going to paint over this background like we are, um, you might want to cover those little, little bits up. But I've got one done. I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like. And it definitely is going to take some paint to cover the black. <laughs> but what inspired me is when I first started this video, I was standing in front of my chalk wall, which I chalk. I do chalk videos if you haven't seen those yet on YouTube. And it just inspired me. It might be kind of fun to have a little bit of that black show through like it does on a chalk wall on a cute little painting. Okay, I'm going to paint the other three and I'll be back in a while. Pop it in here just to tell you a quick little fact. So the amount of paint I had put out originally was uh, enough to paint two and maybe a half canvases. So some people like that information, just thought I'd let you know. Another quick art tip that I thought of. So when I'm done painting a canvas and I'm drying it with a hair dryer just to speed up the process and get it surface dry, um, boy, my brush is messy. I dip my brush in water and then I just set it on a paper towel so it doesn't dry out on me. You cannot get dried acrylic paint out of a brush. That is a, that you just can't do it. And then I realized with my black paint, I'm being quite neat and pulling, um, paint from one side and I'm keeping it quite clean. Here with the white, I'm doing a decent job because I still got quite a bit of clean white paint I can get to from this side. But if you like to conserve your paint, just pull it from one side and that helps. Or you could just treat yourself to a fresh blob of paint if you like. But I wanted to pop in and mention that. Hey friends, it's the next day. Actually, it's about 24 hours uh, later because I got kind of busy today. Um, here's my traceable. I use a ballpoint pen. Actually, first I scribbled on the back of it with some white chalk um, that was a little bit dirty. It's just some school chalk. So scribbled on it, uh, knocked some of the dust in the garbage, taped it on and traced it with a ballpoint pen. And I think I'm just going to work on two of them at a time instead of all four. And then I decided to use sort of a yellow lime green color. A oh, brilliant yellow green. Um, use any green you have. Just add some white to it to make it lighter. I also have this green, which is a little more intense, I believe. Oh, it's pretty close to the same color. It's a little deeper. Just use what you have. And then I'm really not sure where this is going to go exactly. I'm playing playing with it. Oh, and if you need to touch it up, um, sometimes a chalk's kind of hard to draw with. I also have a General's charcoal white pencil. You don't have to get all these things. I just let you know what I do. <laughs> sometimes people like to know. And I'm actually broke out a new brush. Uh, it should be a Royal Lang Nickel which is hard for me to read. I think it's a number four. It's either flat or bright. I'd say that's a flat. And then I think I'm just gonna dry brush. I decided to make the grass green on all of them. Oh yeah, see I do. I want, I want some of the black to show through. So I think that part's gonna work. Plus this green looks like it's somewhat transparent. Maybe more than somewhat. And then you could paint the legs first. The legs are gonna be pretty much black, but I'll put some highlight or something in them. Oh, and then I was thinking you could paint your background first and then put the bees and the lamb on it. But I kind of wanted the black around the bees too, I think. I'll find out after I paint one of these um, which way I actually like it. So I'm just going to keep at this and I'll come back with some progress. I thought of something. So you know how I painted the background um, swirly? I just enjoy it. 
Um, it's not going to show, I don't think at all, by the time I paint everything on top of it, because I'm going to put so much more color on top of it. I just thought I'd pop in and say, you just paint it solid black if you want to. Or don't paint it black at all. Just paint it um, the colors you want. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just putting um, bunches, just patches of grass, because I'll come back when it dries a little bit. Like I'll work, oops, I just put my thumb on some wet paint. <laughs> um, I kind of started on one side and painted over to the other side. And then by the time I get that done, oh, and the bottom too. And I come back and added a little more paint here and there. So where it's darker green is just where there's another layer of paint. Anyway, I just wanted to pop in and say you don't have to paint the background the way I did. I just do it because I enjoy it. Hey, so I think I'm already learning. So this one has a little bit more black showing through. Although I may come over both of the ones I'm painting and add more green. I'm not sure yet. And this one has a little more green on it. I'm not sure which one I like better. But I might like this one better. We'll have to see. And then I'm going to paint one pink background and one blue background. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this as old paint, which I haven't used much. We'll have to see what kind of um, shape it's in. But it's close. I want a baby pink. So it's already close. You might add a little white to it. Um, if you have quinacridone magenta, you could add a little white to that. Um, I've also got this pink, which I know is much newer. Anyway, just use whatever pink you have. If you don't have pink, put down some one of your reds and add some white to it. That'll work great. Okay, I'm going to set up my palette again. Okay, I, I do not know how many years old this is, but... Uh, Acrylic paint can last a heck of a long time. This is still really in really good shape. Oh, and if you notice it smells a little pungent, that just means it's old and it's got some bacteria growing in it. Um, I'm going to grab some white. I don't know if I can grab enough clean white from that pile. I should probably just put out some, some more white. I'm not sure what uh, how light I want my pink. Oh, I think I do want it lighter. Let's get some white. Oh, here's, I might as well show you. I rarely show you this. I buy a big, I don't know, what is that? I'm going to say a jar, but it's almost, it's 13 and a half ounces of white because I go through white the most. Let's put some more out here. I'm gonna end up with a pretty big puddle. The pink's stronger than I thought. That's one advantage. Like I'm using colors I don't normally use. I mean, they're fun colors. I just, like if I'm painting a cow, I don't use this lime yellow green. What was it? Brilliant yellow green. I think I want the lighter pink. And it doesn't have to be that well mixed. I'm just kind of playing with it. And acrylics dry darker, so you never know anyway how it's going to quite go. You can always fix it after you see how it dries. And it should be darker on the black, too. Although that green held up pretty well, didn't it? And I don't know where my brush is. I'll be back in a little bit. So I painted just a little bit with the pink. There's some of the darker pink, which is a little bit more transparent straight out of the tube than, of course, when you mix white with a color, it becomes more opaque. Um, you can put a little matte medium with it to make it more transparent. Um, maybe a little water. You don't want to put too much water with it, but you can put some water with it. And I'm just kind of trying to decide. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of both. I'm wondering if I wanted to leave more of the background black. I keep painting over it more than I intend to, I think. Of course, I usually, um, especially this is a brand new painting. I didn't 
you know, I haven't painted it before. I tend to be less confident about it. And then when it gets close to the end, I'm like, oh, I like that. <laughs> so I think sometimes it's good to hear me sort of talk like that because it, it happens to everybody. You're like, I'm not sure. Oh, and then I'm going to go in a bit on my chubby sheep. Maybe it's a lamb. Um, because I can always cover it up with white if it gets too jag jaggedy on me. What I probably will do though is have the darker pink up at the top. You can tell I'm thinking. And then you can always come back and you know lighten it, darken it. We can actually come back with some black too. Um, if we decide we covered up too much of the black. That's one of the really nice things about acrylic. Okay, we get the idea what I'm doing here with the pink. I'll be back. So I'm making some progress, and then I decided I had some more light pink over here, but my sheep is gonna be white. So I got a little nervous and decided to go with a straight out of the tube pink. And then I put a little uh, Mars black out, black, Mars black comma out, <laughs> because I got, my green got a little high on this side. You can't really tell because I painted the pink to straighten it out. But I'm just gonna put in Kind of, I kind of want a black line here. Actually, we might want some black here. Of course, I probably shouldn't be doing all this right now because I'm not sure exactly where we're going yet. Oh, see, I really lost some black on this side. Oops. I don't want more of a line there, I think. Now watch me, watch me end up painting that out. Okay, I just wanted to pop in and show you what I was thinking. Let's take a look at the blue one I'm working on. I'm using, I think you say cerulean blue. Um, this is from Michael's Artist Loft. Loft. Um, I'm gonna change my mind. I can, I'm pretty sure I said I wasn't sure I liked this green grass, but as I look at the pink one. Oh, it looks cute through my uh, phone that I'm videoing with. I think I'm gonna want softer texture so it's not quite so busy. But I also think I might like this darker to lighter that I'm doing a little bit more with the blue. And then I wanted to say if like these bees are really little, um, you can just go in there with a little brush if you want. I'm really not sure how I'm gonna handle them yet and just paint around them a little bit. And then on the bees, I'm getting, um, on the bee bodies, I got kind of close because they have black stripes. So, but we'll see, we can always fix it. Like here where I put in the black back in, we can always fix it and make adjustments. And it probably just needs more layers and more paint. Um, that happens a lot with acrylic paintings. You don't like them for quite a while, which I know I mentioned before. Okay, I just wanted to pop in and show you how the blues look. And I'm doing doing the same thing. I just put random brush strokes and I come back and put some more. And then I stop because I'm not quite sure how far I want to go. Oops, and I might have just got blue. I don't know where that blue paint came from. I must have, oh, I must have picked it up from the top. But I don't think I got it on my painting. Okay, got to go wash my hands. So let's take a look at what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna paint the bees. Um, I've painted them on the blue one. And I painted, well, I haven't finished painting them, but I'm painting white here so that I can come back over it with yellow because yellow is transparent. And I think I'll probably leave the wings the way they are. And then I added a little black. 
And I don't know if I'll put some more black up here or not, but whoops, I just put some water on it so it darkened it. Because <laughs> it gives it a little bit more dimension. So there's kind of, I think you can see it on this one. There's a little bit of black down on the bottom of the face. A little black up here at the top. Um... And the reason I'm going to paint the bees on this one, and then I'm going to paint the body so I can figure out whether the background needs to be a little bit smoother or not, how I like it. It looks smoother on the video than it does in person. Maybe if I get a little closer, that still looks a little smoother. So I just thought I'd pop in and tell you what I'm up to. Oh, and then uh, on the traceable, I really don't have a line here for the that the white that I painted for you get here I'm not making any sense so I added sort of a white line that's going to be yellow because I realized I didn't have the right number of stripes to go black yellow black yellow black you could just go black yellow and then all black but that's easier because they're pretty little okay So I'm just putting the white down with a little brush. It kind of curves to make the body look round, kind of like a little, kind of like a chubby C. So I can put yellow on top of it. And then so I can have a little bit more stripes maybe, I put a skinnier line right before the, the pointy tail. And then if it doesn't look quite right, you can come back with some black and shape it up. So I think, I thought I'd just pop in and show you a bee. But since we're painting on the black background, um, it, it'll just be quicker to paint the white uh, for the bee body so I can paint the yellow over it. Okay, I'll be back when I make a little more progress. So I just did what I talked about. I made this white a little too wide. So when this dries, I'll just come back with some black. So I'm going to put some black here to make it stronger. So don't worry if you get a little chubby you can always go back and fix it and then if that black gets a little chubby let that dry come back with some white I'm gonna see if I can hold this and paint it um, and see it because it's really close to my cell phone well, you get the idea um, I need to put it more in front in front of my line of vision there. Alrighty, let's work on the sheep. And I've just got a crappy old, I think it used to be a little knife brush that I've trimmed. I don't know if you can see, it's got, it's really in bad shape. <laughs> but I'm gonna use that because it'll, um, I'm thinking it'll make some fun texture. I just offloaded a little bit of paint So the white is pretty opaque. So if, you know, you could always go slow. I mean, you could paint the whole thing solid white if you wanted to. Um, you can go slow and see how it's gonna cover. I'm just trying to pick up a little bit of paint there. So this is pretty much the same as the background. I'm just using a smaller brush so I can control it better. could leave that actually I I was gonna take off this little bit over the ear but maybe that's okay one of those happy at happy accidents um actually I think maybe I'll let this dry after I picked up some paint already That's probably heavier than I want. Like I said, I mean, it's kind of good-bad when you have a 
an old worn out fuzzy brush, you get some interesting textures, but it's harder to control. So use, use whatever brush you like. Right now I'm just cleaning it out because I'm going to go back to, well, this is the brush I used for the background, but I think that's what this brush used to be, but now it's worn down and fuzzier. So I'm going to use that. And when you, if you're done, when you're done with your painting and you notice a few of these chalk lines left, let it sit for at least a day, and then you can just wash the chalk lines right off. So now I'm really dry brushing. I'm almost like cleaning my brush off. Try and keep it kind of random. But I wanted to see how it looks once I get the white on there because it's going to add more contrast with this black and I didn't know if the background needed to be softened more, which I think I mentioned already. I know I mentioned that already. So now I'm trying to decide how long my video is and how much of this you like seeing. I know some people like the, um, you know, like five minute time lapse ones and some people like the longer ones. So I could try to do a little bit of both. Oh, well, I'm thinking of it. Oh, I almost went over the ear. I need to pay attention. Um, I had a person uh, message me because they wanted to send me some money as a patron and they said I didn't have any links on my YouTube which I don't so in my about section it has you know links to my Facebook page um, gosh I don't know what other, I have to I should look to see what all the links are oh links to the traceables and then I added a link so that you can send money through PayPal there's two PayPal links I think if you use the QR code link one that it they won't charge me they started that during the pandemic. I don't know if they're still doing that. And then there's a Venmo link. Or you can email me. My emails are if you want to send something snail mail. And I super, super appreciate your support of these videos, buying my art, the comments, the likes, the shares. Um, it's just amazing. There's so many wonderful people out there. Okay, I think you get the idea. I'm just going to work on this a little more. I just did that. Did something I thought you might be interested in. I just... So there's a lot of paint on the back of my brush, but not much on the, the bristles. And I just kind of lightly scrubbed in around the face because I want to make sure the face is defined. And you could take a smaller brush if you're more comfortable with that. But I think I'm going to set this down and let it dry. And I'm going to do the same with the blue one. And I'll be back with progress. So I'm thinking I like this blue version where the green's a little softer and the back, I think the blue background's a little bit more done than the pink version, but you may not. Um, they're quite similar. And when I look through my phone, so I'm just thinking I might want a few more like lighter squares here. I'll show you the top of this one. That's totally up to you too. But you see, I think I like this one where it has a little bit more depth and color where this is pretty much all the same color. Um, I'm gonna paint the yellow bumblebees with a little brush just to see how much those pop out because they should really pop out. So I put some cad yellow on my palette. Here, it's the basics. I have mostly heavy body, but sometimes I can't find the color, especially during the pandemic that I want. And, you know, I, I like the basics just as much. It's just not as heavy body. I think they're just as much, there's just as much pigment, pigment in them. I'm having trouble talking. They're just a little thinner. I don't know how to, how to explain that. 
but just not as heavy body. Okay, so let's start on the left. Would be smarter since I'm right-handed. And you can just paint these solid yellow. You could make them a little bit orange towards the bottom, which I might do. Okay, that one's such a little line. I think I might paint that one off camera so I can see it better. But since I have the white underneath, it's really easy to paint. Paint the yellow on top. Oh, that looks cute. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a little bit. Hey, guys, I started putting more green on this one because I liked the green on this one better, that it was a little softer. And then I mixed a little lighter green with some just some of this uh, brilliant yellow green. Here, I'll show it to you again. It's been a little while. Um, with some white... And actually, I think I might be liking that better, too, and just having some kind of around the sheep so the corner, you know how I talk about having corners darker? I think I like that even a little better. But from here on out, I'm just playing. And I think I'm going to play, too, with maybe a little lighter gray and a little then straight-up black, like on the legs, maybe a little lighter gray on the face part of the ear, that kind of thing. But now I'm just playing with whether I like it. Essentially, the painting's done. And it's just up to you to do what you like best. Okay, I just want to pop in with what I'm thinking. Let's compare the two now. So I've got another layer of green on here. And then, as I mentioned, I have some lighter green, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, I personally like it better. You guys don't have to. It's uh, whatever you want to paint, whatever you like. So I even put another layer on the bottom. I'm not quite as worried about the bottom. People pick it up, but usually these sit um, on a shelf. But let's compare here. Yeah, I think I like this one better. Oops, I don't want to lower it down into my paint. So I think what I'm going to do is just put a whole other layer of pink. I knew I wanted more on the top because I have a little bit more on this one and then I'll probably put a whole nother layer of the white but it's starting to look really cute it's starting to look like I hoped I like that there's a black line and black um oh just black little basically areas to lead you around the canvas I think that's really cute hey I think this pink one's looking a lot better um I like it softer I could still make it softer um, I think I mentioned that I was putting two coats on, but really with the pink, I would work on this side, you know, bring it around and work here, and then come back and put a couple more. I still may put some more, but I think now what I want to work on um, is I might put some black back here, but I definitely need some white. And I may, I was using this brush. I may just use this fine brush or round, small round brush for a little more control. I'm wondering if we want a little black because like this one has some black around the top and that one I pretty much painted it out. So actually maybe we'll paint that's one thing nice about painting two at a time. You can see what you like in one. And while you can't, they're both individual paintings, uh, original paintings. You can, uh, I could see with this one that I wanted more pink background with that one. You can kind of compare them, figure out what you like and don't like. Yeah, I think I might need some black. So people quite often ask me, how long does a painting take? Well, pet portraits take a lot longer. Um, they're much more detailed. But, you know, even though this is a very simple, simple drawing, 
simple painting. I've got, with the black background makes it take longer. And then since I like the softness, I'm putting quite a few layers on it. It'll end, they'll end up taking me about three hours a piece. I sell them for $25. I used to ask, gosh, well, my, my, my um, painting rate scale that I set up, these should be about $50 for an original. Um, but they weren't selling based on their size, and then people don't really understand how long it can take sometimes. And Plus, if you factor in how many years I've been an artist, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, But I sell for $25 because people will pay that amount. And I enjoy painting them. And sometimes a $25 painting helps make a fan, make a, you know, a collector. Or not make them, but help get them interested. And then they'll buy more expensive art for, from you too. So now I'm wondering if I put too many dots in there. Too many white dots. <laughs> you can go back and forth and back and forth. So now my next decision is, I think I want some stronger whites. Definitely sort of. Of course, I haven't really, I don't really have a defined light source. It's pretty much coming straight down based on the grass here. So maybe we'll make the stomach or whatever this would be come out a little bit more. A lot of times. So I'm in some beginning acrylic groups because I really enjoy meeting new people. And and uh, every once in a while I offer a little bit of advice and I see people are like, what's wrong with my painting? Or, you know, how can I fix it? Sometimes it just needs more layers, more time, a little more love. I mean, go slow. See what you like. Paint it more than once. Um, like I'm learning a lot. This is the first time I'm painting this. And uh, I'll probably paint this one quite a few more times. I have a feeling it'll sell really well. Um, like I paint a bunch of bead paintings and you just get to know what you like and it changes. What you like changes too and that's okay. But it's like playing a song on the piano. You, you get better at it if you keep playing it. Okay, yeah, see I think I kind of like these little grayer, or she, I don't know if it's a he or she. I suppose she, pink background. Of course, I don't know. It's not like guys can't like pink. Gosh, I remember, um, of course, I'm probably showing my age. I remember when guys wore pink ties when I was young. I thought those were really cool. Okay. I'm going to work on the blue one, but that one could be about done. Oh, yeah, I was going to paint some. Let's do that. I'm cleaning up my brush. I have two jars of water, so I get most of the paint off on a paper towel. And then I just get like the brush wet and try to get even more paint off. And then I have a sort of a clean water rinse too for a final rinse. I'm gonna get my paper towel in here. I'm wondering if we wanna mix a little I don't know if that's going to be too light. If it is, we'll fix it. Whoops, I just got paint on my hand from my other paper towel off camera. I wonder if you want to paint like a little... It's kind of sticky. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. I also had a ton of uh, paint on my brush. You know, I think that's too light. I'm going to come back with some black. Oops, got a little water. I don't want that to drip on my canvas. Okay, 
you can tell I'm concentrating. I'm just blending right on the leg. Oh, I think I might like that. A little straight up black. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. So I start talking and I start painting. When I'm really concentrating, I can't do both. Um, I'm going to do that to this leg and probably make this leg wider. And then I might do that a little bit to the face. Okay, I thought I'd try to paint this. Uh, and video. So I put a little wet, that's a wet gray streak right there. And then I had straight up black on my brush. And I'm just looking, I don't know if that's going to dry too dark. I'm just looking for a, just a bit of a highlight. I'm going to grab some black. That's one thing nice about not having a totally solid black background in the be the beginning. Because we can play a little bit with the dark grays that we ended up with. Boy, oh, I hope I'm on camera. I'm going to grab a little more black. Just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Smooth out that ear a little bit. Cute, cute. I think I like that I got more white on there. I want you to see, I'm hoping you can see in the video, I think this one's done. If not, it's really close. So if you can see the little hints of gray. Oh, sorry guys, I'm trying to hear me if I do that. The little hints of gray in the face, the legs, the ears. Really just, I think that makes all the difference. And then the extra layer on the background and the green makes a lot of difference too. I'll come back at the very end when I have the blue one and say, uh, the blue one done and say goodbye. Hey friends, I think I'm done. These turned out really cute. You never uh, know exactly how it's going to work when you haven't painted it before, but I really like how it turned out. Um, I did, here, maybe you can see it better on this one. I did add some orange just to give make the bees a little bit rounder. Oh, and I put little eyes in them. Um, to make the orange, I just took a little bit of the pink with the yellow. You don't have to, or you could put out orange. It doesn't really matter. Um, I put little black dots. I had them green, but uh, they just didn't show. So I put a couple dots on the side. Anyway, let me know what you think of this one. I'm hoping it's easy. Um, you don't have to paint the black background, which will make it go quicker. Um, there really isn't a lot to do but square brush strokes. Anyway, I, I hope you like it. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for subscribing. Um, download the traceable on my website. The link will be in the, um, what do you call it? Show notes in the, dis not in the discussion, in the comments. I think I need to stop painting. I've been painting for a long time. Art hugs. Thanks so much, guys. I hope to chat with you soon. Bye.